Hi everyone, this is the Gas Walkthrough for August 9th. I'm Philip Newman. Today I'm solving Pyramidal Sudoku by Bill Murphy. And this is a little bit tricky as far as variants go, um, just understanding the rules and um, making sure you don't mess them up. Um, we, we had some restarts and testing on this one. Um, it's definitely a gas puzzle. We just need to be careful. Um, so I will try to carefully explain the rules and then we will be careful about solving it. We have normal Sudoku rules, one to nine in each row, column, and three by three box. Additionally, we have these pyramids made up of gray cells, which are diagonally touching. And what these pyramids tell us, if we consider any three cells in this sort of configuration, where we have one cell on top and then the two cells that it touches diagonally beneath it, the cell on top contains a digit which is either the sum of these two or the difference of these two. So for example, we could put an eight here and have a sum of maybe nothing, six and two, six and two works. So that's a possibility. Um, but those are the rules. Either we have a sum or a difference. Um, for some choices of top digit, we could have either one and we're going to have to figure out which is which. For some, we can only have a sum or a difference. And um, you'll, you'll see what I mean as we solve. Um, so starting at the top, nine cannot be the difference. There is no way to have two digits in a Sudoku that have a difference of nine. So this must be a sum, and the only way to make nine as a sum of something in seven is two. The seven, however, could be a difference, but in this case, it would have to be nine minus two, and we have a nine in the box. So this one is also a sum. To get seven, we need a five. Here, two cannot be the sum because it's smaller than one of the digits. Um, it couldn't be anyway because we would need two ones or something like that. Um, but if we have the smaller digit on top, we have to have a difference. We could have seven minus five, but there are sevens looking at this cell. So instead we have five minus three. And now we have the same situation here. We have a two on top, five underneath. This one could be either three or seven right now. We can't determine that. Um, I think this was the source of me restarting the first time I saw this. I think I just filled in a three, matching that three and didn't think about it. Five here could be the sum, but it would be three plus two, and there's a two here. So instead it's the difference, and this is going to have to be eight minus three. And now this eight is going to tell us what this is. So in order to have a three here, it has to be the sum. It's going to have to be the, or sorry, the difference. It's going to have to be the difference either way because this digit is going to be smaller than the eight. So we can't have a sum. If this were three, though, in order to have a difference from eight we can't have 11 that's too big and we can't have five because it's in the row so this is a seven and to have a difference of seven we need a one so that's the top pyramid done down here eight could be the sum or the difference but if it were the sum we would need a seven here to go with the one and we have a seven in the row so instead it's the difference and the only way to make a difference of eight in sudoku is nine minus one the one could be seven uh, minus six, or it could be eight minus seven, but we have an eight here, so this is six. The nine again has to be a sum, so this is three. Seven can't be a difference now, because we would need 10 or minus four. Um, either of those are not valid in Sudoku, so this is a sum, we need a four. Six as well can't be a difference, and it's, it's kind of the same thing here um seven is too big of a difference to go with three six is too big of a difference to go with four because again we would need 10 or we would need to go into the negatives so this is a sum that's two and finally three can be a difference it would be five five minus two it could also be a sum it could be one plus two and that one is unresolved um, just considering the variant so we'll get to that when we do the rest of the puzzle. So now it's just classic apart from resolving the cell. So let's look at our 
digits that are most restricted, I guess. Um, just looking at the top, we have sevens here, so there's going to be a seven in one of these cells. We have twos here, so there's a two in one of these cells. I uh, don't see much else we can do up there with that. Let's look at this row. We need two, four, six, and nine. So this is two or four. This is four or nine. This is four or six. And this one is two, six, or nine. And none of that is resolved, unfortunately. Um, let's come down here. Sevens down here are more restricted because these can't be seven. Threes, um, this can't be three here. So this is our three. Sixes are more restricted down here, so this is six. And we're running out of digits to place here. Um, this cell is actually naked single. Uh, it sees two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Uh, so it's a one, and that resolves our five. And the way I saw that, by the way, I mean, it, just looking at this, it might not be obvious that this is a naked single. Um, we're looking at digits in columns and boxes and stuff. What I was actually doing in my head there was we need one, four, five, and eight in these cells. And then I looked at this, oh, there's a five and eight here. Oh, there's a four here. And that's how I got there. Um, this is an eight and a four. So yeah, a lot of times looking for naked singles, you're actually looking at same sort of thing we did here, looking at the possibilities in, in the row or the column or the box, and if one of those cells happens to see a bunch of other digits elsewhere, you might have a naked single. Uh, this row needs 2, 5, and 8, and we have a 2 and 8 in the column. So that's a 5. Those are 2, 8. This box still needs 2, 8, and 9. So this is the 9 from the 2, 8 here. And then we also have a two here. And this is one to finish the row. These are five and nine. Those are not resolved. So a lot more progress at the bottom in this one. The seven here resolves our seven at the top. In fact, we have most of the sevens. Yeah, seven is gonna go here in this box and here in this box. Uh, the nine here resolves our four, which resolves six and two and nine. One to finish the column. These are four, six, and eight. The four can't go in these cells in the column. And then we have a six in the row here. Uh, this is a one. One keeps being my last digit uh, for whatever reason. Uh, five and nine to finish the box, resolved by that nine. All right, this column needs three, four, and six. It's not particularly restricted. This is one, three, or four. I'm just noticing we have all of the high digits here. We have a two here. Um, so nine goes in one of these cells. That's not helpful. Uh, this can't be one or two, so it's three or four. This also can't be two or one or four, so this is three, four, one, two, like that. This is four from that three, and now these are going to be three and nine, and we do know the order from this three. The nine resolves five and nine down here. These are nine and five, resolved by this nine. Uh, one and eight, resolved by this eight. Six and five, resolved by this six. The eight looks down for two and eight. This is, what are we missing? Two, three and five, six and four, can't type, uh, three and eight. And to finish off, we have one and we have six, and that's the solution. So the, the variant is not that bad, especially, um, with the given digits that Bill gave us. Just have to be careful to remember all the possibilities. Let us know how you did it in the comments, and I will see you next time.